obviously this thing is only like a kilometer across or something. Um, oh, the, you know, yeah. I mean, c compared to Jupiter, that's very, very small, yes. right? So, yeah. so it doesn't. There's hardly any light coming off it. If you look into the blackness of space and you've got a kilometer-sized rock that's, you know, a couple of AU away from you, that that's hardly anything. So these things are. Um, you know, they're, they're hard to detect. And so they, they move fast across the sky. And so... Rei Atlas going to kill us? <laughs> What's going on? It, it could do. No, I, I, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried. Some people are. Some people are freaking out right now. Who's freaking out about it? Like in the science community? You know what? It's amazing. It's kind of become like this viral thing. It's actually not so much the scientific community. Scientists are definitely interested in it as well. But this one's really broken through in terms of pop culture, right? You've got um, celebrities tweeting about Kim Kardashian was like tweeting about three outlets the other day. So you've got, you know, people are getting uh, all over the world are getting really engaged about it. And it's kind of a double edged sword. You know, it's, it's great because when people are talking about science as a scientist, I'm always mm. excited about that. But uh, yeah, we'll get into it. But there's, there's a lot of uh, confusing, conflating information about it as well. And so some people are panicking that their lives are going to end and other people, maybe the scientists are more like, you guys maybe don't need to stress right. out too much. So there's a lot, there's a lot to say about this object. All right. Well, let's unpack it because I know like Professor Avi Loeb has been going on some podcasts. I believe he just did Joe Rogan again yeah. to talk about this. And I haven't had a chance to listen to that and like what the overall take is. I've seen the cliff notes of it. Like, oh, could it be something from another planet of a of another species or something, that's a little beyond me. But for people out there who don't know anything about this and just want a basic understanding, minus like a Kim Kardashian tweet, <laughs> what what are we referring to when we talk about 3i Atlas? Yeah, so 3i Atlas, uh, 3i means third interstellar object. So we've detected three of them so far. The first one was Oumuamua, uh, which is Hawaiian for messenger from afar. Mm. Uh, that was, I think, 2017, 2018. And then the second one, uh, by the way, Omumu was the one that actually also had a bit of alien jazz about it because you might remember, maybe you can pull up, there was uh, some beautiful artist impressions of it being um, cigar shaped and people were mm. kind of freaking out about that. Like, why the hell does it look that way? Yeah, this guy over here. So the top left, for instance, you can kind of see. And this was in 2017 they discovered this? I think it was 2017. I mean, don't, yeah, don't quote me exactly on that. But yeah, around 2017, a few years ago. And um, the, the shape, I mean, that's not a real photo. That is inferred. So we can't actually image it that beautifully. We can just see the light bouncing off it and reflecting. And so we can see it the light going up and down, up and down, and you can kind of figure out what kind of shape it is. So it could either be a pancake, actually, or this. We're not sure which one it is. But either way, it's, it's pretty weird. Now, what is the process to discovering something like that? Like, how did they come upon this? What did they use? Hey, guys, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge help. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the show. So the way we look for asteroids and comets in the solar system, it's kind of hard because they move very quickly compared to Planets, right? Planets are just dawdling along across the sky. Mm -hmm. So if you take a, a an image, you're going to easily snap it. But these objects, they're moving so fast and they're pretty small. Obviously, this thing is only like a kilometer across or something. Um, oh, the, you know, Yeah. I mean, c compared to Jupiter, that's very, very small, yes. right? So, yes. so it doesn't, there's hardly any light coming off it. If you look into the blackness of space and you've got a kilometer sized rock that's, you know, a couple of AU away from you, that that's hardly anything. So these things are. Um, you know, they're, they're hard to detect. And so they, they move fast across the sky. And so you have to kind of see these trails. So you see, okay, here's my photo. And you'll notice that there's one dot that's basically going do 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 across mm. the sky. Okay, and you're like, that's not a planet. Planets don't move that fast. It must be something else. You try and track it, and then you can figure out an orbit. And so for these interstellar objects, there's three of them now that have been found. Oumuamua was the first, and there was 2i Borisov, which was very comet-like. Um, Oumuamua was a bit weird. It's kind of, it looks more like an asteroid than a comet. Um, that Can you explain the difference for yeah, people so out there? Yeah, so a comet normally means it's icy. It's, it's like a ball of, imagine like getting, you know, going skiing, picking up some snow, making a slush ball out of it, chucking in some dirt from the pavement and just mushing it together. That's kind of what a comet is. Mm. It's just a, just a dirty snowball. And so when the comets get close to the sun, all that snow boils off and you get these beautiful tails and plumes coming off them. So they're really wonderful to see when you can catch them through a telescope. Whereas a rock doesn't do that. A rock just basically stays a rock. As it gets right. I mean, maybe right. it'll break up, but usually, you know, it stays together. Um, and then the the third object, 3i Atlas, is almost certainly comet-like as well. So we've had two comets 
uh, the last two, two and three are comets, and the first one was a rock, Oumuamua. Okay. And, um, you know, it was a little bit surprising when we first found them because it was predicted that they should be out there. So these are these are things which used to be around another star. So uh, another solar system, mm -hmm. light years away, was giving birth to planets. And during that chaotic process of giving birth to planets, there's, there's lots of material kicking around. And some of that material can do a close passage of its Jupiter-like planets and get kind of ejected out like a particle accelerator, basically. Just get kind of swung out of the solar system altogether. And so there's presumably billions of rocks just, just wandering between the stars. And now and again, they will, by happenstance, happen to come close to our solar system mm. and pass through, which is pretty wild. Um, and when you predict how often that should happen, we didn't think we'd get anything for like for 10 years. We were like, maybe once every 10 years, we should get one of these things. And so in the last few years, we've had three. Mm. Um, that's partly because we've started to get the telescopes that are more sensitive. But even with those more sensitive telescopes, we still didn't expect to get quite as many as we've seen. How can you even, pre this This goes a little beyond my, my pay grade here. How can you even accurately or somewhat accurately predict how many you might see when you're talking about small objects, relatively speaking, compared to planets, as you say, yeah. that are coming from other solar systems that are right. light years away from us. It's, it's a lot of guesswork, to be honest. I mm. mean, you you take, a lot, a lot of our guessing is based off the solar system when it comes to this. We look at how many rocks we know are kicking around the solar system. You look at the asteroid belt. You look at, there's another asteroid belt further out called the Kuiper belt that's beyond Pluto. And so you look at, you know, how much stuff do we have in our solar system? And then you sort of simulate the motion of the planets and you ask, how often would you expect something to get kicked out? Mm. So you kind of run this calculation and yeah, you end up with a number and the number we're seeing is significantly higher than what we'd expect, um, which is interesting. But I mean, maybe the solar system is, there's many things about the solar system that are kind of weird, right? We, or, you know, we know that I'm, my main job is looking for exoplanets, planets outside the solar system. And we know for sure the solar system is not a typical solar system. There's many things about it which are this odd. One. Yeah. Yeah. So our home we know is odd. So why, in the same sense, why should it be that all the junk in our backyard would be typical of junk in other people's backyards, given the solar system has so many weird things about it already? So in that sense, it's not completely crazy. But uh, yeah, there's a few anomalies in particular. Well, about Oumuamua as well, but especially 3A Atlas that Avi Loeb has been saying on podcasts and his blog, he's been saying, like, here's a list of, I think he's got 10 anomalies now. Mm. I was going through it this morning, like, looking at all the anomalies Can he's got. That up? See what he's got. Yeah, and so on these 10 anomalies, he's saying, you know, each of these things is sufficiently, well, maybe not in isolation is strange, but when you take the whole list of them, he thinks there's a case that this could be an alien spacecraft that's passing through the solar system. How far away is it approximately right now? Where is it at the moment? It's basically behind the sun right okay. now. Yeah, so it's that's kind of unfortunate. Is this the correct list? Yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, one of my colleagues debunking of the list, actually, oh, which is kind of fun. So if, if you- well, science it, on science crime, I yeah, like it. Yeah, so he lists, if you scroll down, he actually lists the uh, the 10 anomalies here. So if we keep going down a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so here's that list, right, that, that list there. All right, so should I read some of these? Yeah, go ahead. All right, let's start with number one. It's retrograde tra trajectory is aligned to within five degrees with the ecliptic plane of the planets around the sun with a likelihood of 0.2%. Dr. Kipping, let's put that in, in English. <laughs> let's, let's translate that one. Yeah. So all the planets in the solar system basically orbit more or less in a disk, in a plane. So it's like a pizza pie, right? There's, okay. there's not stuff that's completely uh, wonky coming out of the pizza pie. It's all in a flat uh, pizza pie. Um, and so if you have a random asteroid or comet come from outside the solar system, you wouldn't really expect it to happen to come in at the same angle as the plane of the planets themselves. So that's mm. called the ecliptic. The ecliptic plane right. is, the, is the plane of the, of the solar system planets. So that's a bit odd um, because as far as we can tell, each star is just completely randomly oriented in space. There's no particular preference in space. So that's a bit odd. Um, however, I mean, my debunking of this a little bit would be, I'm not sure how much Avi's looked at this. So I'd like to talk to him about it. But the these surveys that we're doing to look for comets and asteroids, the survey was called ATLAS. That's why the subject's called 3A uh, ATLAS. <laughs> right. So that the telescope survey was called ATLAS. And they preferentially look in that plane because that's where most of the comets in our solar system live. 
So uh, we tend to give much more attention to that region than we do the north and south poles, if you like, of the solar system. So the fact we detect an interstellar object in that direction is, in my book, very plausibly just a product of the fact we we look there more often. Mm. You know, so it, there's a selection bias, we'd say, like a winner's bias towards right. looking towards towards that region. So. Yeah, for me, and also the likelihood isn't super crazy at point two. I know it sounds maybe to some people like that's a super low probability, but um, by scientific standards, there's there's millions and millions of of one percent, point one percent anomalies. So to me, this isn't you know that, that that if if that was the only thing, you definitely wouldn't be like, oh, it has to be aliens right, because right. like of course something could randomly come at that angle. It's not like that has to be an alien spaceship to do that. Short, natural stuff will also do that sometimes. But that's why he's got nine more. That's why he's got nine, so we can keep going. All right, let's yeah. go. <laughs> All right, so I'm rooting for the aliens. I'm just saying. <laughs> During July and August 2025, it displayed a sunward jet anti-tail that is not an optical illusion from geometric perspective, unlike familiar comets. Yeah, so I actually did had to do a little bit of research on this one because I have to say, you know, to be clear, comets is not my got my notes. Oh, look I've at this! Come, I've come come What's with that, receipts. Like a two by four, <laughs> a different this, kind of two. By this was four. all I had in my hotel room, so I was like, this, <laughs> this is going to have to do for the notes today. <laughs> Get this guy a fucking notebook. I know. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.